boom, Longhorns. Uh, pull a little bit of a surprise here, Jerry. Uh, Jermaine Lowell, defensive tackle out of uh, Louisville, had originally committed to Oklahoma, but the Longhorns flipped uh, the six foot three, 310, 315 pounder uh, out of Louisville uh, by way of Arizona State, by way of uh, Long Beach Poly. Uh, this is a guy that was extraordinarily productive earlier in his college career, had some injuries, transferred to Louisville, played more than 400 snaps. For, for Louisville last year, with the addition of him, Norton, and uh, Tia Savea, they've got three guys that had more than 300 snaps at defensive tackle last year added to the roster this offseason. Uh, tell us what you know about Jermaine Lowell. Yeah, first of all, coming out of high school, Long Beach Poly, he was recruited to Arizona State by Antonio Pierce and Herm Edwards. Those two guys know talent. So it's never been about talent for Lowell. It's been about the health issues. He's had three surgeries. So can, how healthy will he be here in his six-year college football? But look, early on at Arizona State, I mean, for Texas fans that don't know, Bobby, you said he was really good. 27 tackles, three sacks freshman year. Sophomore year in 2019, okay, 71 tackles, six and a half sacks. Was firmly on NFL radars, right? Then the injuries started creeping in. In 2020 at Arizona State, 24 tackles and a sack and a half. And then last year, after two years off, essentially, 19 tackles, one and a half sacks. So this is a guy who in four seasons, and he had been four fully healthy seasons, I mean, you're talking about 43, 7, 141 tackles and uh, 12 and a half sacks, okay? That's a lot of production. That's a lot more production than an Alfred Collins, than a Vernon Broughton have given in Texas at the college level. Now, Alfred Collins has about 85 tackles and a few sacks, but Jermaine Lole Lowly, before the injuries, was on the NFL radars. Now the question for Texas after flipping him from Oklahoma, Bobby, is how much does he have left in the tank? He's had three surgeries, I believe. I think it was a triceps muscle, uh, maybe in a meniscus, and then an elbow as well. So he's had some bad luck injuries, but when he's healthy, he's a productive player, and he's a guy that plays on the other team's line of scrimmage. Well, it's very interesting, Texas uh, going after Dominic Williams, uh, Oklahoma going after Dominic Williams and Lowell, as well as other guys. And it may be Lole. I want to be clear about that. I, I apologize if we're mispronouncing his name uh, at this point, but we're just now learning more about him uh, as as well, Jerry. Uh, look, uh, Texas, not I, I, we talked about this. Uh, they they do not stop recruiting uh, just because something happens or it looks like it's situations bleak they keep recruiting to the whistle yep. and this is just another example of that with them going out and uh, finding somebody in the portal that has been committed to Oklahoma I mean just committed a week ago right I mean what, what do you think about that but look it's recruit through the whistle we talk about it all the time with Steve Sarkeesian this staff and here's a little more uh, here's one more nugget for Texas fans he was on campus last weekend quietly and and it was really kept quiet I doubt Oklahoma even knew, but there's connections there to Johnny Nansen. Johnny Nansen recruited him out of high school, out of that Long Beach area. Again, Johnny Nansen's name's going to pop up on a lot of portal guys and a lot of high school guys in Southern California. Johnny Nansen recruited this kid at UCLA out of high school and USC before he went to UCLA. So he knows the kid. He knows the family. He has longtime connections to coaching people around Lole. Uh, so that that's, again, Kenny Baker uh, and Johnny Nansen tag team this one. And Texas snuck him in last weekend, uh, a little under the radar. So if you recruit, if you think Steve Sarkeesian doesn't recruit through the whistle, think again. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Jerry, uh, what does this mean at defensive tackle? I mean, people have asked me, well, Bobby, are, are, is our defensive tackle worse off than what we maybe thought? Or is Sarkeesian just trying to buttress it? for the long run of an SEC battle uh, with guys like Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton, who, who are not necessarily those anchor types in the middle. Yeah, I, so I think it's a little of both because I, I believe Sark, when he said in his press conference before spring practice or after the first day, that we have a little better uh, play, players at D-line than giving credit for. He meant interior D-line. Uh, so I, I agree with Sark on that. Do they have a front-line first, second-round type pick? No. Do they have quality players? Yes. But what they've built now is depth, the sustained injuries, right? If you're get, a, if you're lucky and get a healthy season out of low lay, you might get a difference maker. I mean, you just don't know. 
Uh, but let's just say this, Savea, Norton, Lole together, that builds depth to fight through injury. Then you add in Sadir Mitchell, Jare Bledsoe with Broughton, with Alfred Collins, with the uh, Aaron Bryant. I mean, so suddenly Texas now has the – they want to rotate six players, and they don't want there to be a drop-off on players five and six. I think that's the key here. They want to be able to rotate, stay fresh, but not just stay fresh and give up uh, something at that position. They want to have experienced players, players that are ready to play in the SEC. And then Lole, look, I mean, he's a guy who was up for all Pac-12 honors before the injuries kicked in. He's a very talented player. Um, and so you put him with Norton and you put him with Savea, and suddenly um, Texas has three defensive linemen out of the portal that are all 295, 310, 325 pounds and have played a lot of college football at the Power 5 level. It's very interesting because uh, you mentioned that after his sophomore year at, at uh, Arizona State, he was actually ranked the second best returning defensive interior yes. defensive lineman in the country by Pro Football Focus, and then the injury started. Yeah, um, and you, then he transferred to Louisville and immediately got injured with his elbow there and missed an entire season. Uh, last year he comes back, has 400 plus uh, snaps, and then, uh, 19 tackles, five tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, one forced fumble, and then two batted down passes. Uh, not a uh, extremely productive year, but I don't know, you know, that kind of depends on what he was really asked to do at Louisville in, in a defensive scheme. The big piece for me is, uh, to your point, it's just another guy. You you say this all the time, Jerry. There's no excuse for a team to be too young anymore yep. at any position, not when you have the portal. It's not an excuse when you're a blue blood. And Steve Sarkin, I think he's kind of proven you right in that yeah. uh, theory. Yeah, no. If your coach stands up on, on the podium and takes the mic and says, we're young, uh, you got the wrong coach. This is not in blue blood football, not for blue blood programs. I mean, you recruit three straight top five recruiting classes. Yeah, but that's not that's not what you depend on anymore. You have to be an experienced football team. And just look at the Texas schedule. They're going to Michigan. They have – uh, Oklahoma, they have AM back on the schedule. They have Georgia. They have Florida. At first year in the SEC, do you want to go into that schedule and that league with an inexperienced team? Absolutely not. You're going to take five losses. That's not the way to go about this. Uh, so Steve Sarkeesian knows that. Jeff Banks knows this. The staff knows it. They understand it. No excuse to be inexperienced. And if you really think that you have big goals in front of you that are attainable, you will recruit through the whistle to ensure you're an experienced football team. Uh, Jerry, they they may not be done. I mean, right. I, we talked about this. I mean, they 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 can still look at, at other players at other positions, young players too now that they think may be good bounce backs. Uh, they've got 82, 83 scholarships now, I guess. Uh, we could be seeing them still going after more players in the future too and perhaps saving one or two as grad transfers yep coming yeah. out uh, in the summertime. So I guess we'll see exactly what Texas decides to do uh, the rest of the way. But clearly uh, addressing the defensive tackle rotation this offseason. I mean, geez, uh, three new guys all coming in, keeping Sadir Mitchell. You mentioned the importance of that as well. But J Jermaine Lole, I think that's a better way to pronounce it than I was. Uh, Jermaine Lole, uh, Bill Norton, and Tia Savea all coming in with 300-plus snaps kind of just unheard of, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, because you, you always think, is there enough, go going to be enough in the portal for Texas to really make hay a defensive tackle? This also uh, gives Texas, I mean, a portal class where they're now bringing in nine starters yeah. from other teams this past year. Uh, Louisville was a good team last year, Jerry. Yes. They weren't yeah. great, but they were good. This is Clemson, two from Alabama. Uh, where else? Two from Arizona. They're yep. all uh, – it, it's very interesting to me exactly how this is playing out uh, right now for the University of Texas and what they've done in the portal and even to a degree where college football is going uh, right. right now. Longhorns uh, not uh, coming up short, in my opinion. And uh, you know what? Do losing Dominic Williams probably did hurt, but it also may have uh, sprung free Jermaine Lole too. Yeah. And uh, Longhorns capitalize on that because they're – uh, uh, ties. You mentioned Johnny Nansen and his ties 
uh, to the family there uh, back when he was being recruited. All right, Jerry, any last thoughts uh, before we uh, get moving on this one? Congratulations, by the way, to Jermaine yeah. and his family. Now, look, uh, on Texas football fans, thanks for continuing to support us. Uh, we're over 45,000 subscribers. Couldn't do it all without you. And this one's live from Vieira, Florida. I haven't done a, a video from Vieira, Florida, uh, but this is where this one's coming from. So everybody have a great day, and congratulations to Sarkeesian, Kenny Baker, uh, Johnny Nansen, because Jermaine Lole, if he's healthy, really good football player. All right, Jermaine, uh, from Jerry Hamilton, myself, as well as a bunch of Texas fans out there, hook them, bud. <laughs>